It's locked. Good evening, Miss Ashbury. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual recently? A few days ago, I spotted a strange house while campaigning for women's suffrage. Awful smell. No answer when I knocked. Where is it? It's the Mullanies, a nice family who live in a big house near the park in the eastern part of this neighborhood. Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards to your mother when you see her. She's been quite busy these last few nights. I suspect you may see her before me. Even someone you're close to! Good evening, old chap. Are you all right? I won't lie to you, Johnny. I'm not a well man. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Can you help me? Infection is everywhere these days. But if you ever go to the park near that swanky house belonging to the, the Mullanies... Yes? What about the Mullanies? What about their house? Not enough noise for a big family with children. Not enough movement. Closed doors. What is going on in there? You need some rest, Clarence. You should try to sleep.
we meet again, Mr. Kimura. In a more peaceful situation. Dr. Reed? Still visiting London by night? We must both be nocturnal animals, you and I. After your captivity, I thought you'd be more cautious. Breathing the cold night air helps calm my mind, sir. I've had the most frightening nightmares since I escaped that filthy jail. May I ask you what you do for a living, Mr. Kimura? I am... I was... a landlord. A wealthy one. And... not a very kind one, I realized recently. Why this sudden epiphany? Is it because of your near-death experience? I was already feeling nostalgic about Weymouth, my hometown. With recent events, I'm thinking about going back there. How is the situation in the West End? I've heard rumors about armed men patrolling and fighting infected citizens in these very streets. I was lucky they didn't shoot me when I was abducted. Why are you so nostalgic for your hometown, Tadao? I was focused so much on making money, I almost forgot that my relatives and friends are threatened by this epidemic. Have you heard anything from your family? I was not only a bad landlord, I was also a bad husband. I've not seen my wife and son for years. Busy, busy, busy. At least now you're ready to go back and see them. But don't be surprised if your son bears a grudge, sir. You make it sound like you suffered from an absent father yourself, Dr. Reed. Well, I'll keep your warning in mind. Have you no friends at all? Over the years, I'm afraid my greed turned me into my friend's adversary, while I became friends with my professional rivals. Those you grew up with didn't share your views on money and success. Would you believe I was once a member of poetry circles and an astronomy club? We were young, such joyful dreamers then, that I stopped laughing long ago. What can you tell me about your abduction? If you really want to know, I was locked in that building for three or four days. My jailer was insane, mumbling about sacrifice and voices. And why didn't he sacrifice you? That was the weirdest part. He claimed to spill blood was not enough. It had to be done when some stars were aligned. Which stars? That's the whole point. He wanted me to talk to him about some... Red Queen configuration or constellation. I've never heard of such an astronomical term. What did he say about voices? He constantly whined about the voice of his master, ordering him to do terrible things. He wanted to silence the voice by offering blood. My blood. Can you change? And is it what you really want? If so, it must come from within, not without. I've seen what an altruistic gesture can do. Nothing forced you to save me, Dr. Reed, but you did. I will follow your example in these matters from now on. There is no need to thank me. Rescuing a London citizen should not be out of the ordinary. Though I'm afraid it may appear so in these difficult times. You did not only rescue me, you fought for me. You put your life in danger to save me. That's quite extraordinary. How will you cope if you're attacked again? I don't know. I've heard about these men and women who patrol the West End every night, chasing criminals like my abductor. Maybe I should join them. Tell me, Tadao, why was your abductor so interested in your passion for astronomy? I don't know. We met a few times at the Royal Greenwich Observatory. He seemed to share my hobby. Then he invited me to his house and locked me in. Yes, astronomy is a fascinating subject. When I was a child, my mother bought a small telescope for my sister and I. We spent many a pleasant evening stargazing. Stars are not just dots in the sky, Doctor. 
They are the key to our understanding of the cosmos. They remind us how insignificant we are. You're right. But children love magic and stories. I remember our mother told us constellations have the power to protect us. Protection by the light of the stars. That's sweet. You remember the name of these constellations? Draco. My favorite constellation. Memory's a strange thing. I can recite without hesitation the names of the 88 constellations, yet I barely remember my own childhood. Did he fake his interest in astronomy to get close to you? No. In his madness, he spoke about a blood sacrifice to be made to his master when the stars aligned to a specific configuration. Goodbye, Mr. Kimura. Take care. Dr. Reed. A great night, what? I may have a look at your goods, Mr. Russell. It's locked. It's locked. Good evening, Dr. Reed. A great night, what? I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual? Not really. Wait, now that you mention it, I don't see the McPhersons in my favorite restaurants. They love delicate meals too, you understand? Thank you. It may be nothing, but I'll investigate anyway. Where do they live? They have a house in the southern part of the district, somewhere north of the railway bridge. There is a courtyard, if I remember rightly. Goodbye, Mr. Russell. I'm sure you'll take care of yourself. Crush the liver! 
Cannot enter. This woman's body has multiple lacerations. They're deep, too. Whoever did this was driven by rage. He had his tongue removed and his eyes gouged out. He was a victim of brutal torture. This one's neck is broken. He was young, probably the son. your family. They mocked my talent!
stage in the disease's evolution? So, this girl took lessons at the famous Doris Fletcher acting school. That building is under quarantine. 
Could this be what I'm looking for?
Locked, all right.
can't believe I'm doing this. I have this thirst for blood.
So the husband had an affair with Doris Fletcher. Doris Fletcher seems to be the missing link here. It can't just be a coincidence. I should go to her acting school. Good evening, Jonathan. How are you? I'm still investigating from inside the Ascalon Club. Can we talk? Of course, my dear. I have investigated new sources of infection, and I may have found a new type of scowl. One suffering from heavy mutations that is extremely contagious. Scowls come in various forms, you know. They are simply degenerate versions of their makers. I believe these families are different, and I'm currently pursuing a lead. I know I can find the true source of contagion by finding who created these creatures. That would be great news. Be very careful, my dear, when dealing with such creatures. How is your investigation going? I have decided to explore beyond the dictates of reason. What do you mean? 
You may on occasion find this house closed when you visit me. If so, it is because I have gone undercover. Sort of. Who are you going to surveil? I hope you're not considering spying on McCullum or the guard of Prewan. No. I intend to ask a few questions in parts of town I rarely venture into. Dirty places where a delicate lady like myself should never be seen. When will you return? As soon as possible. And I don't intend to stay away for long. There are many paintings adorning the walls here. Yes. Did you paint them? No, my dear. But some of them. I have had a long time to learn from the best. I'm currently working on what could be my greatest masterpiece. What is this masterpiece? Your portrait, my dear Jonathan. It will be my gift to you, if I ever have time to finish it. Have you met any famous painters? Are you trying to divine my age by cross-checking historical dates, my dear? That's a devious parlor trick. Well, Elizabeth, I tried my best. Don't I deserve some reward at least? Well, if you must know, I even posed for the greats. Now that you know it, you may recognize me when visiting museums. Goodbye, my dearest. Goodbye, my beloved.
Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. Do you require medical assistance, Nurse? I will be fine, as soon as I can get some sleep. Nurse, you won't be able to help people if you're sick. Take this, and do try to get some rest. I'll try, Dr. Reed. Thank you. Goodbye, Nurse. Call me if you need assistance. Good evening, Milton. Good evening, Doctor. Still trying to save lives. Do you need any medical help, Milton? I'm afraid I do. Like everyone in this hospital. It's a sad state of affairs when even the hospital workers are worried about disease. Our job brings us into contact with all kinds of infections, Milton. There's no shame in being ill while you're in a hospital. That's easy for you to say, Doctor. I get the feeling you don't fall sick often. But thanks, anyway. I'd like to see your goods. Wise choice, Dr. Reed. A reliable gun is what everybody needs these days. Wasted too much energy for so little result. A daily routine.
Good evening, Miss Howcroft. How are you tonight? I need blood, Doctor. Warm, rich, vibrant blood. Do you require my services, Miss Howcroft? My condition cannot be understood by you, mortal. This curse is beyond your science. I will come and check on you later. I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. Good evening, Mr. Elwood. Evening, Dr. Reed. Soldier, do you need assistance? Not really. I think you caught something in this bloody hospital. I swear I'm dead. Yet yeah, smiling inside, Dr. Reed. As long as you remain here, I will make sure you don't have to worry about your health. Don't think you can do much about it. Damage is done. Goodbye for now, Mr. Elwood. Damn. The pain. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. I'm quite busy right now, Dr. Reed. Do you need my assistance? Don't be ridiculous. I'm capable of dealing with this myself. I've just not taken the time to do so. Then you are lucky that I have taken the time to do so. Consider it a gesture of solidarity between professionals. I wish this hospital could have received as much attention from you, Dr. Reed. We do not see you in surgery very often. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. You always knew the words to calm the children, Ellen. As for me... I'm so tired. What a blood really This shift never ends. Good evening, Doctor. How is my son doing? Do you require medical attention as well, Mrs. Goswick? Do you know you're the only one who's asked me this? No. I don't feel well, actually. Despite what you think about this place, I can tell you with absolute certainty, taking this will help you recover. Well, at least your reputation seems well deserved. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for this hospital. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. Good evening, Mr. Fiddick. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Any news about my operation? Is there anything else that's bothering you? Can I help in any way? Really? Why has no one else asked me that since I got here? I thought I was in a hospital. Unfortunately, you are not the only person who needs help. And complaining about it won't do you any good. Well, perhaps you're right, Dr. Reed. I'm sure if me missus was still alive, she wouldn't be happy with me going on like this. Goodbye for now, Mr. Fiddick. I'll see you later. I will not let you down, my voice.
Hello, Jonathan. How are things on the West End front? Complicated, my friend. The rich and powerful feel threatened by the disease and have asked me to put an end to it. Yes. It is odd how resolving a crisis suddenly increases in urgency when it affects those who matter. It looks like the epidemic is spreading to the western districts of London. I am trying to locate the source of the infection. It won't be an easy task, my friend. This disease is highly contagious. Do you not think epidemiology could be helpful in this matter? To retrace the origin of infection through time and topology? If anyone can perform such a miracle, it will be you, Dr. Reed. <laughs> Since this epidemic is evidently linked to the vampire curse, we must find the original carrier to understand where it comes from. I admire your logic, Jonathan, but be careful. Rationality, when it comes to your kind, is not always a reliable lens. Does the Brotherhood of St. Paul know anything about the Ascalon Club? Well, I'm afraid that's unlikely. Ascalon is a sensitive topic, and whatever material the Brotherhood has, I may not have access to. Who could answer me, then? Usher Tooltree, our current primate, may be the only one able to answer you. He's a discreet man who lives in the West End. Do you know Aloysius Dawson, the famous tycoon, is well-versed in vampire and occult knowledge? No, I did not. But that is no surprise. For half a century, it has been quite the trend for English nobility to join secret societies and occult circles. But Aloysius Dawson is only a rich merchant. Yes, richer than Croesus. Wealth is more respected than title these days, even in England. Did he contact the Brotherhood of St. Paul? Try to join your group? It would not surprise me, but I am certain he's never been a member. Thank you for your time, Edgar. It's locked. Done.
It's locked, all right. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Such a pleasure to see you again. Please show me what you have to sell. Of course. It's just trinkets and curios, really. But I'm sure they can be useful. Tomorrow, more bodies will... Good evening, Dr. Reed. Such a pleasure to see you again. Do you need medical attention? Well, the proximity of the dead is not the most healthy company. Even if the quiet can be appreciated. Don't take too many risks with your health, Mr. Chidana. None of us are immune to this disease. And that is a good thing. Death and disease is a constant reminder of our mortality. But you have my thanks, Dr. Reed. Goodbye, Mr. Chidana. It never ceases to amaze me how you, the dead, seem peaceful and lost at the same time.
favorite newborn! You are no longer a vampire as a soul! Gotcha! Sort it out, right? It's not my call, Barrett. You... Fancy buying something, sir? You never lose your focus, do you? Right then. Show me what you have.
Fancy buying something, sir? You never lose your focus, do you? Right then. Show me what you have.
this feeling will disappear someday. Good evening, Mr. Petrescu. Surely you have someone else to bother, Mr. Doctor. Tell me everything you know about Camellia, the mute florist. I do not believe in the afterlife, Doctor, but I'm almost convinced Camellia is an angel. She volunteered to give out our medical leaflets. How do you feel, Mr. Petrescu? Do you need my help? I need nothing from you. Goodbye, Mr. Petrescu. Good evening, my dear colleague. I'd like to see what kind of medicine you're selling. Swanborough Cordial can be the answer to all your problems, as long as you have the money. Good evening, Benjamin. When can I help you? I'm afraid not, Mr. Reed. You don't seem well, Benjamin. Do you need any help? I always feel ill, sir. It's like I'm never right. I can try to help your body heal, sir, but you must stop destroying it. The war destroyed me, Doctor. A gun, alcohol, and a bad temper make a terrible cocktail, sir. Goodbye for now. This elixir 
here will give you faith again. Locked, all right. This feeling will disappear someday. Please, sir. Good evening, Miss Halcroft. How are you tonight? I need blood, Doctor. Warm, rich, vibrant blood. Do you require my services, Miss Halcroft? My condition cannot be understood by you, mortal. This curse is beyond your science. Well, until the day science finally admits failure, please accept this little contribution. Thank you, Doctor. Your efforts are admirable. Though laughable. I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? Do you need my medical attention, dear colleague? I would have been confused if anyone other than you had asked that question, Dr. Reed. But your help is welcomed. There is no shame in helping each other. We're colleagues, after all. Many doctors I have known are too cynical to think that way. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. Good evening, Dr. Tibbetts. Dr. Reed, any good news to share? Do you need any medical assistance yourself, Doctor? Yes, indeed. But don't worry, I am perfectly capable of taking care of myself. 
I have no doubt about it, but you are still ill all the same. Please, take this medicine. I appreciate your concern, Dr. Reed. To be honest, I just did not take the time to diagnose myself. Goodbye, Dr. Tippett. I'm sure Kaloon Russell has no interest in such a conventional menu.
It's locked, all right. There's an open window on the second floor. I should be able to get in through that. I cannot enter.
welcome to you, nations of hypocrites. For in front of you stands the tall queen. You can't... Can that be Doris Fletcher's voice? Where does it come from? In front of you stands the tall queen. It's locked. Who are you? You who dared enter my realm. Are you here to worship or mock me? I'm here to put an end to the vampire epidemic, Miss Fletcher. Ah. But Doris Fletcher is no more. She was consumed by this putrid flesh that now enshrouds her. You feel anger for what happened to you. But I can help you. I'm a doctor, Miss Fletcher. Doris Fletcher is no more. All that remains are the dreams of the queen she was and the queen she'll be. Until then, all shall die, for that was her final wish. My blade, I summon thee, my children. <laughs> <laughs> I smell your fear. <laughs> your hand is shaking. Touche, I smell your fear. My children, 
my beloved, die for the love of me. Ah! Your hand is shaking. Go unto thee, son of Babylon. Slayer, the disgrace of she once renowned. Will she be the queen again once they all share her fate? On guard! My blade shall pierce your villainous heart. Die.
My children, my beloved, die for... Thirst for blood. I cannot enter. It's locked. Thee, my children of the night, fight! <laughs> 
believe I'm doing this. Your blood will be mine! Touché! <laughs> Blood will be mine! <laughs> Your hand is shaking. <laughs> Too 
My father, prepare to ah! 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 
summon thee, my children of the night. to die. And I did not come to kill you, Miss Fletcher. Will you spare me then? Save this cadaverous carcass of mine. Does your heart beat a little faster now? You fancy me then, Doctor? No, Miss Fletcher. My dead heart will beat for only one. Ah! Is she pretty? Is she sweet and tender? To me, yes. Ah! I hate her already. I know. And this is partly why you must be destroyed. But you just said... That I did not come here to kill you, yes. But I realize now the threat you embody must be stopped. Will I be remembered? Will you? You were Doris Fletcher. The greatest actress of her generation. No one can take that from you. Thank you. And farewell. Farewell, Doris. Bravo! So dramatic! I love it! McCullum! How strange I seem to find you whenever I'm inquiring about that skull infestation. I mean you no harm. I'm not here for you. But once I put all the pieces of the puzzle together, I'm sure we'll have a little chat, you and me. Stay away from me, McCollum. You and all your war dogs. 
That I can't guarantee, Dr. Reed. But I'll let you go. For now. I should probably leave the theater right now. The West End should be safe now. But London is not. It would be wise to benefit from the Ascalon's protection while I continue my research during the Great Hunt. These people want me dead. I need to leave now. So Doris just needed to be close to her audience to infect them. Contagion. You're in through skin. Very disturbing. I'll put it into you! Come <laughs> on. 